Chopping up, chopping up, simple. Chopping up, samples. Chopping up, simple. Life is just out here slowly moving. Oh, don't you worry, I'm just chopping up, chopping up, samples. I'm just chopping up, chopping up, chop. I'm just chopping up, chopping up, samples. I just wanna hit one. Life is just out here slowly moving Oh don't you worry I'm just chopping up, chopping up samples I'm just chopping up, chopping up chop. I'm just chopping up, chopping up samples I just wanna hit the one and play one one play Hey y'all It's your fellow human being being himself Leo the slowly moving Hope everybody's doing well and welcome to Chopping Up Samples, a show dedicated to all things samples, how to chop them up, how to create them, and just how to create sample loop arrangements that you can use in constructing your sample-based projects. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and now time is freeing up and the knowledge that I have as a sample-based artist is enough to where I can just be able to share some ideas that you can be able to use in your own audio production work. Um, with this first episode, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of some ideas. And I'm going to talk a lot more in this demo and probably uh, than probably in other demos in future. But I'm going to give an overview as to how I go about sampling what are some ideas that I think are important in, in sampling and apply those to an actual sample itself. Something to keep in mind or that I should probably mention before I start is I'm approaching this from a Reaper user's perspective. My DOS software of choice is Reaper, but I, all I'm going to be talking about here is concepts. So the concepts here should apply to any sample-based project in any DAW. Um, and also, I'm going to be approaching this from a blind person's perspective. So I will be telling you some key commands that you can use in doing the actions that I'm going to demonstrate as I go about my sampling process. And for those who are blind and who want to start their journey of audio production, there's a playlist below on how to get started with Reaper using a screen reader and hope that may be helpful. So with all that in mind, let's just jump in and start sampling. So the first step in the sampling process is listening. That's very obvious, but it's very essential. And the main reason for it is because listening is a time saver in sampling. When sampling something, you're trying to identify the things you like about the sample. What are the things that catch your eye and the things you want to, for lack of a better word, accentuate? And if you can identify what you're wanting to sample, it makes it easier for you to construct a sample loop. It makes it easier for you to construct your sample-based project. So. With that in mind, um, what we are going to be listening to is 18 bars from a song called Parhelion that I got from FreePD.com. FreePD.com is a website that has CC0 content. And what that basically means is it has songs that are in the public domain or that artists have dedicated to the public domain. So. There's no copyrights to it. Anybody can use it for commercial or non-commercial purposes. So here we go. Okay, so there's all the 18 bars that I'm going to be sampling from uh, Parhelion. 
if you want to listen to the full song, I have linked the webpage to where you can find Parhelion on freepd.com in the description. So there you go. So the second thing we're going to focus on is manipulation. Uh, manipulation is just the process through which you take a sample and distort it or change it in some way that it sounds uh, either completely different or somewhat different from what the original was. My main two methods of manipulation are just chopping and reversing. So chopping is just the taking of a sample and splicing it up into smaller, more manageable segments. And reversing is just taking one of those segments or an audio item, audio item and just reversing the audio content so that whatever's first is last and whatever's last is first. So um, how do you go about doing this in Reaper with key commands? With, in terms of chopping up stuff, you just hit the letter A at um any point within the item on your track and it will start creating miniature items or it will start creating uh, new items wherever you start splitting them up and to move around you hit control um, page up and down to move by beats so that you can be able to split wherever you want to split now, that being said, I split in two beat segments. So I split my items up into two beats long each. And the main reason for doing this is because it's best to have a sample size that is manageable for when you're playing it out on your MIDI keyboard, as well as if you're going to arrange something uh, just within Reaper without using a MIDI keyboard, it's good to have things of the same length so that way everything can fall on beat whenever you're going to move stuff around. So that's with chopping. Now with reversing, I just like reversing because when you reverse stuff, you can identify some dynamics that are not in the original forward-facing audio. And also if you layer a track that has forward facing audio with reversed audio you can get some different types of dynamics going on if you pan them off to the right and the left it, it's crazy um but that's the that's the main reason why i like to reverse audio um and how you go about doing that is just by hitting the letter v on whatever item you want to reverse so a for chopping up stuff v for reversing and some other things I would like to highlight before we actually get started in the manipulation process is I like to duplicate items by hitting control D on the track. And in order for items to move around on the track, you got to hit alt shift P to activate ripple mode per track. So there are three ripple modes. By default, ripple mode off is what Reaper is set to. And what that means is if you start deleting items or cutting and pasting items, no items will move out of the way of the item you're pasting or deleting. So if you're going to do that, it's nothing's going to move. But if you do ripple per track, what will happen is when you start cutting and pasting items around, the items will start moving around in terms of the length of the item you're pasting in or cutting out. So. If you're making a mini arrangement, you can start cutting stuff around and pasting stuff in different places to make an arrangement without needing to use a MIDI keyboard, which in this case, this is what we're going to do. So now, now that we got all that out the way, let's get started with the actual work of sampling. So here we go. So. On this track, I already have chopped up all the items. So there's 35 items and I'm going to reverse all the items. So we have heard what it sounds like forward facing audio, but now we're going to reverse them. So we're going to hit all control A to select all the items and we're going to hit V to reverse. 
So all items are reversed now and here's what it sounds like now. So let me delete all the bars from bar nine onwards and just focus on this section. So what we are gonna do now is take the couple of items and see what we can do if we arrange them so ripple mode per track remember is set to i mean ripple mode is set to per track using alt shift p and now what we're going to do is just duplicate and cut stuff out let's see let me see Duplicate that. Mm. Let me see. If I delete this one, what would happen? Oh, and what I'm doing is, if you hear like this type of pattern, wait, if, if you hear this type of pattern, you'll, what I'm doing is I'm taking the item and going to the middle and creating a split there. So I'm just hitting control page down to move by beat and then hitting A to split in the middle. And then that play, I would be able to delete the item and basically create like a more quicker do do as opposed to do do. So that's one way that you can be able to j just create more dynamic arrangements and also reverse stuff and see what happens. Okay. Wait. I'm going to put that. So hitting control space will pause whatever you're recording. I mean, whatever you're, um, the cursor, the play cursor, wherever you're currently at now. So that way you can just have, you're not 
always starting at the beginning of the project. So, and you hit control left and right arrow to move forward and backwards by item. So there's something I should probably mention, and I probably should have mentioned earlier, and that is when, for me, when it comes to arrangement, um, it, it's essential that you are looking for a groove. So uh, obviously, it, it sounds like grooves are something that you can create, and you just fit the sample to that groove. However the path of least resistance is figuring out, okay, what does the sample say? And how can you rearrange the sample so that it can sound like a groove that you can play your bass guitar for, or your kicks for, or whatever you're wanting to add to it, so that way it sounds more groovier. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, with arranging this stuff, as you can see, or better said, as you can hear, there's like a do 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 like that's what it sounds like and that's what i'm trying to organize all these items into that type of pattern so that way whenever i'm going to apply the baseline you're going to have like this the pattern there okay let me see. copy these and then paste these there and now we have eight bars of material so let's see what happens what well, this is what it sounds like now Okay, so let's see what it sounds like if I was to unreverse this. <laughs> so it, the, I don't know, the, the, it doesn't sound like an overall great groove. Like, it's closer there. I just need to work it a little bit more. But I want to see what it sounds like if I apply some drums. I'm going to pull up another project and just pull some random drums and see what happens. Okay, y'all. So here is what it sounds. Here's what happens when you add drums. At least with this type of groove that we kind of have going now, uh, here's what it sounds like.
Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm just gonna s- f- fully pledge this out in another song uh, or another <laughs> another idea, another project, another day. Um, I I think what I am gonna do just because I want to see what texturally happens. Another thing that I like to do is there's a pitch plugin, a pitch shifter plugin called Ray Pitch in Reaper that can allow you to layer some pitches. So I'm going to apply Ray Pitch to the Parhelion track. And uh, I'm going to find it. Okay, I got it. I'm just going to add another shifter. So that way I can have just the normal uh, un- unshifted audio. And then uh, a, a shifter that's seven or five semitones up. Just to see what it sounds like. And then I'm going to add some reverb to it. Add reverb. So this is just the preset that I have on my reverb plugin. Leo, just wanted to say <laughs> I'm not done with this idea, but I'm done for now. And hope you enjoy with whatever you see, whatever you hear. And uh, keep safe. Shalom, peace. Until next time.